Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Joe Palmer begins now. Good evening everyone. A 16 year old has been charged with murder and a family has lost a father in the wake of an alleged stabbing attack at a Blackman's Bay petrol station yesterday. 41 year old Reed William Ludwig was returning a trailer when he was allegedly killed by a stranger. He's being remembered tonight as a fun loving devoted father. A community coming to terms with a shocking tragedy here yesterday afternoon. An alleged stabbing at this Blackman's Bay petrol station now being investigated by police as a murder. Upon arrival they discovered a 41 year old male uh, suffering a knife wound to the stomach. He was transported to the Royal Hobart Hospital where sadly he passed away uh, shortly after. The man revealed by authorities as Reed William Ludwig from Taruna, the father of young children sharing many joyous moments on social media, including trips to the skate park. He's been described as a man with a special sense of humour by former school friends. The Hutchins Old Boys Association saying the incident is a tragic end to a family man in the prime of his life. Unfortunately, it's quite a tragic circumstances with family members present. Um, before he was taken to hospital. Police say events unfolded around 3pm when Mr Ludwig was returning a hired trailer to the petrol station where two youths were at the scene. Police will allege that a verbal altercation occurred between Mr Ludwig and one of the youths. Uh, this led to a very minor physical um, confrontation which then quickly escalated. A male youth was arrested at the scene and later charged with murder. He was due to appear in the Hobart Magistrates Court today, but can't be named for legal reasons. It's always a confronting uh, thing when this, this type of uh, event occurs. Um, it, is, it is a tragedy, and, um, but again, uncommon. Police have thanked members of the public and staff here at the petrol station who they say provided assistance to the man before first responders arrived shortly after. You don't like to think that something like this could happen um, near where you live so uh, yeah we're all um, I guess grieving and feeling for Mr Ludwig's family today it's a shocking thing to happen. Today a bunch of flowers left at the door of the petrol station the only sign of the deadly and tragic incident that unfolded here claiming the life of a man described as genuine, fun-loving and devoted to his children. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. A man accused of deliberately starting a fire in the state's north has today faced court in Launceston. It comes as a bushfire at Stony Head and another at Lafroy were downgraded to advice level warnings. Jackson Cadman taken into custody yesterday in the sand dunes at Beechford. Today he walked out of court where he faced charges of armed robbery, stealing a car and unlawfully setting fire to property. It's alleged Mr Jackson set fire to an area at Stony Head which triggered a bushfire on Saturday. The Tasmania Fire Service says the blaze is says the blaze 100 hectares in size on Defence Department land. More than 60 firefighters fought to bring it under control on Sunday afternoon. Jackson Cadman did not enter a plea. He was released on bail. He will reappear in court on December 17. Investigations are still ongoing into the Stony Head blaze as well as a separate fire at nearby Lafroy. Flames have already ripped through 193 hectares on parks and wildlife land. Crews are now strengthening containment lines on the edges of the fire. More smoke is expected to blanket the region as backburning continues. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. A group of Extinction Rebellion protesters charged with refusing police orders during a rally at State Parliament have appeared in Hobart Magistrates Court. In October, multiple people were arrested and charged with failing to comply with the lawful direction of police officers after allegedly blocking the entrance to Parliament House and the Executive Building. At the time, 13 adults were arrested and charged, with seven youths also taken into custody to be dealt with under youth justice. Justice laws. The adults are expected to reappear in court in January. 
and hundreds have rallied outside state parliament against proposed anti-protest laws which could see activists jailed or receive large fines. Opponents have labelled the legislation fascist, but the Premier says they're designed to protect innocent Tasmanian workers. A familiar sight on Parliament lawns, hundreds turning out against proposed anti-protest laws. Oh, g'day, you gorgeous bunch of potential criminals. The legislation would make it illegal for people to cause interference at any Tasmanian workplace, such as in forests, mines or at farms. Those found to be breaching the laws could receive hefty fines or a jail term. We've seen direct and targeted approaches from political activists right across the country disrupting workplaces. We don't want that happening here in Tasmania. The topic expected to dominate the last sitting week of state parliament this year. It's so important that Madeleine Ogilvie and Sue Hickey do the right thing this week in parliament and vote down these dangerous draconian laws. This is the second time the government has pushed for it. Two years ago the High Court ruled the original plan unconstitutional. It's deeply frustrating and disappointing that here we are yet again needing to speak up in support of peaceful protest on public land. People are of course free to protest lawfully and in a way that does not disrupt uh, people going about their, their business. Those here today labelling the laws an overreach concerned if passed they won't have a say in Tasmania's future. Well, if it came in, it'd be terrifying because that is the, you know, it's the start of a really slippery slope into a kind of world that I don't think most Tasmanians want to live in. Um, I believe our future um, would be a bit dismal if we all got a bit, if we all got tape around our mouths, not allowed to say anything. Louise Hedger, Seven Tasmania News. The Chinese company trying to take over a Tasmanian baby formula business is now eyeing another local operation. Pura Milk, which has a factory at Lena Valley, is one of several brands set to be sold by Lion to China Mengyu Dairy as part of a $600 million deal. The company is also in the process of purchasing Bellamy's and says there may be the possibility of collaboration between the businesses. Lyon says the sale is subject to an ACCC and Foreign Investment Review Board approvals. The Premier has returned from his recent trade mission to Europe. The five-day trip spruced Tasmania's future capabilities in the defence and energy sectors, as well as our advantage as Antarctica's gateway. We're able to secure a five-year agreement uh, with the French Polar Institute to base their activities here in Hobart. Tasmania's got a fantastic reputation for innovation in the Antarctic and uh, I believe that uh, the French like to partner with us to uh, come up with the best solutions for what they're doing. The mission also included a trip to Spanish shipbuilding company Navantia with the company interested in conducting design and developments in Tasmania. Police are hunting for two men suspected of robbing a Ravenswood business in the early hours of this morning. The pair allegedly rammed a car through the front of the shop before fleeing the scene on foot with goods. This is what employees at the Ravenswood IGA woke up to. Their workplace now a crime scene. Thieves using a stolen Nissan Navara to ram through the front doors of the shop early this morning. There's enough bad things that happen up here, but... But this, this, is, this is shock. After battering through the entrance, two men allegedly filled up a bag full of cigarettes, then fled the scene. Uh, just cigarettes were taken. It was a very quick in and out job. The grocery store forced to close its doors this morning, with the damage bill expected to exceed $50,000. The brazen act shocking local shoppers. Well, they do that to us. Everyone struggles, you know, and they're struggling. It isn't fair. You'll have to get about 20 years in jail for it. It's not so much the commission of the crime and the quantity of cigarettes, it's the amount of damage that's caused by these senseless acts. Works have already begun to repair the damage to the entrance and management hope it'll be business as usual shortly. The two men are still on the run tonight and police are appealing for the public's help to track them down. To see if anyone has any CCTV, any dash cam footage of the incident or of that vehicle driving around Launceston. Anyone with any information is urged to call Crime Stoppers. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News.
A lack of funding is threatening the viability of a youth employment service as a new report reveals just how successful it's been. Social enterprise Trouble Smiths has been operating in Hobart since 2017, giving young people practical customer service and vocational experience, including hands-on time running a pop-up shop. The report released today revealing more than 100 people have graduated from the program, with 65% reducing their reliance on income support. Because it responds to the, the needs of participants and understands their situation and interests and then links it to working in a social enterprise, we found about 70% of participants almost moved directly into work um, or training, which is really significant. Before I started, I never would have thought that I'd be a casual, let alone a part-time employee. So I think it makes a huge difference for young people like me. Organisers of the program are currently in talks with state and federal government to seek long-term financial support. Tasmanian students are taking the plight of the swift parrot and the state of our environment to the global stage. They're joining delegates from across the world as they gather for the UN's climate convention in Madrid. Dressed in colourful costumes and packing their suitcases, these Tasmanian students are taking their passion for the swift parrot to the global stage. Um, we chose the swift parrots because there are only a thousand mating pairs left. Um, just, their climates are specifically, their habitats are being destroyed by climate change. Leaving Hobart Airport today for the first leg of their journey to Spain, making up part of the delegation for the 25th United Nations Climate Change Conference. They've been meeting every year for 25 years, that's longer than I've been alive, uh, and they haven't taken the action that we've needed. And that's why we think it's so important to be there, because they need a new fresh light of youth voice there. This is happening now, this isn't something that I can just think, oh maybe using a metal straw is going to fix, like it needs action, it, it needs legislation. Previous UN meetings have established landmark agreements like the Kyoto Protocol, and put young voices like Greta Thunberg's on the world stage. Going to this conference we want to make sure that the world knows about Tasmania but also its pristine wildlife um, because it's what we pride ourselves on. The conference begins in Madrid next week. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Homegrown swimming sensation Ariane Titmus has added more accolades to her trophy cabinet after being recognised at the Swimming Australia Awards overnight. The 19-year-old received three awards, including Swimmer of the Year, after claiming her first world title in the 400 metres freestyle with a win over American legend Katie Ledecky earlier this year. It's good to kind of round out the season and it kind of puts things into perspective that next year's coming around really quick, so I have to be on track for that. It comes less than a week after she was honoured as the Tasmanian Athlete of the Year in Hobart. Some of Australia's most exciting golfing prospects have hit the fairways in the state's north for the annual amateur golf championships. The three-day tournament coming to an end today with two local talents launching themselves into the finals. Teeing off in Mowbray. The country's best golfers all vying for bragging rights. They're playing for the prestigious uh, Tasmanian amateur title. Prize money may not be on offer for the three-day tournament, but there is a valuable opportunity for players to earn world ranking points. They may not be pro, but that doesn't mean competition on the fairways isn't fierce. It's just been whittled down through match play from about 70 uh, down to 18, the, the, the finalists. So. After storming into the top two, Tasmanian Ryan Thomas's knowledge of the course wasn't enough to help him close out the title. But he says it's just a small bump in the road of future dreams. Everyone wants to be the best amateur they can be. Um, for me personally, I want to turn pro eventually. And while Olverston product Sarah Johnston is vowing to return strong again next year after also being edged out in the second last hole. A state title, you know, it's pretty significant and being Tasmanian, I, I really want to be a state champion, yeah. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmanian News.
Good evening. Friendly beaches out top today with 27, Hobart 26 degrees, Launceston 20, Burnie 18 and Devonport 17. Temperatures over the east and southeast up to 7 degrees above average. Campania 26, Fingal 25, Bushy Park 24 and Ooze 23. Flinders Island got to 20, Smithton and Lowhead 17, King Island, Lyawini and Strawn 16. High level clouds streamed over the east today as low cloud pushed over the west, north and south coasts. A cold front has a layer of cloud over the bite and parts of South Australia and Victoria. A cold pool of air is evident to its west. Cloud with thunderstorms lingers over northeast New South Wales and the northwest of the nation. Tomorrow a high builds a ridge over the bite, the front sweeps away to our east and surface troughs dominate the continent. The winds mostly southwesterly before tending more southerly and up to 20 to 30 knots over the north and east. A strong wind warning from Sandy Cape to Wineglass Bay covers that area. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. A shower or two clearing from Hobart. 10 overnight, 18 the top, 15 the high for Adventure Bay with an early shower. Shower or two for Taralea and just 12 degrees. Launceston showery and 20, 19 the top for Devonport. Showers for Bridport and 19 as well. Burnie, a high of 18 degrees with an early shower. Showers easing from Strawn, 15, 15 also for Marawar. St Helens tomorrow, 17 the high with a shower. Showers for Swansea, 17 and 17 as well for Whitemark on Flinders Island. Here's the UV, that's very high at 8 and 9. On Wednesday, showers over the west increasing in the afternoon, mainly fine and partly cloudy elsewhere. An early shower clearing on Thursday and then fine until a shower develops again over the southeast. And on Friday, partly cloudy before an evening shower over the central central, south and east. Sunny in Perth and Adelaide tomorrow. Showers clearing from Melbourne, just 16 degrees there. Storms likely over Canberra and Sydney. A sunny 31 in Brisbane and a shower or possible storm for Darwin. Temperature holding up OK in Hobart, 22 at the moment, 16 and partly cloudy in Launceston, a bit of cloud over Devonport as well, and 14 degrees. Good to see the forecast has a few showers for the east coast tomorrow, Joe. Let's hope there's a decent fall or two in that. I certainly need it. Thank you very much for that, Murph. That's all from the team for now. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you a bit later. Bye-bye.